Hello and welcome to my new video. If you're new here, hi, I'm Lex. Today we're looking at 15 different ways that you can decorate the cliffs on your island. This was requested um, by somebody under a video the last time I did a 15 ideas video. So I was like, you know what, let's just go ahead and do it. I don't think I've done a video like this before. So I hope that you find it super inspiring. Without further ado, let's get into the first island which just this first area right here is beautiful, but you're going to be blown away. This is a Studio Ghibli themed island. I say Studio Ghibli, I don't know why I just said Ghibli. Anyway, welcome to Howl's Moving Castle. Look at the little Calcifer. Calcifer is the name of the fire in Howl's Moving Castle. Look at him. I can just imagine him eating eggshells and being sassy. I love it. I also love the trees placed strategically around the house, kind of keeping the edges smooth. I think this is so beautiful. And this is one way that you can decorate your cliffs by turning them into some sort of building, whether it be this kind of beautifully themed build or, you know, just a random building. As soon as the creator mentioned that a villager lives inside this tree, I knew I had to visit. This is a giant tree build, right? So beautiful. And check out how they actually used one of the new ladder placements to make a real ladder up to the tree. I think that's beautiful. I also love the use of the cave to add some visual interest. When you climb up here, there is a pipe in the like behind the cliff and it puts you out at Coco's house. Coco lives inside the tree. Look at how well this is designed. I was just completely shocked at how beautiful it is, how like lush and even kind of spooky it is. Coco would definitely live somewhere mysterious and beautiful like this. So I think this is so well done. If you've been around my channel for a couple months or so, this might be familiar to you. I toured this island in the past and I was so happy to revisit it for this video because I love this use of the cliffs. This creator has made a desert themed island, it's Route 66 themed, and so you can see all of the termite mounds up on the cliffs making like mountains. I also think this is a good example of using your island to make a view. Up next is this beautiful and complex setup. I think the creator said that this build was for Julian, but don't hold me to that. There's like a carnival setup down here on the ground level. And then you can look up and see that there are levels of castle walls and castle gates leading up to a villager house. You can barely see the villager house. You can kind of see the smoke coming up from the chimney up there. I think this is so cute and the movement coming from the flashing lights and the little merry-go-round makes this build really visually interesting. Also the bubbles, how cute. But you can use the ladders to get up to the villager house and I just think this is so cute. Another way to use your cliffs, layering. It works brilliantly. This build serves as like double inspiration because first of all, you have the cliff that I'm standing on here where the two lounge chairs are, but there's also the cliffs in the background. This creator very cleverly used cliffs in the foreground and the background to create a really dynamic space, a really beautiful view, and it just works perfectly. I loved it here. The vibes were impeccable. It's perfect for a tropical sort of island and the waterfalls add so much here. I just thought this was lovely and so well done. People really brought their creativity to this submission request because check this out. This cliff is surrounded on both sides by some castle walls. I think that's what they are, castle walls. And that kind of keeps in this highway kind of frames the highway. I think that's so cool. It ends at Nook's Cranny. Make sure you don't just drive straight into the store. The little Nooklings would probably not appreciate that. I think this is so creative and fun. Look at this angled view of the highway, the road. I mean, it looks amazing. Such a good addition to any town or city core island. We've also got another build that you might be familiar with if you follow my YouTube or my Instagram. This island belongs to Susu, whose islands I have visited in the past. Oh my goodness. I mean, 
how good can you be at Animal Crossing? Susu would know because she's at the very top. Look how beautiful this is. I went ahead and walked around a bit so you could get a, a view on how everything is set up. I thought it was gorgeous that this was a villager neighborhood. Then I found this view. Another brilliant use of cliffs. You've got like this whole island in the background just separated by water. So that it's like this mysterious island in the distance. How clever is that? It was just so stunning. Up next, we've got a lot of layering with these cliffs too. I especially loved the waterscaping that went into this area, and I appreciate the combination of the vines on the cliffs and the ruined items, the broken pillars, the ruined decorated pillar. It just looks so good here. I also appreciated the pops of color we're getting from the flowers. I feel like I tend to lean towards just neutral colors, but they really add visual interest to this scene, having the purple and blue about. There was also a way to climb up onto these cliffs. So as you can see, I'm running towards this ladder. This is the cliffs we were just looking at behind the house. And again, it serves as a backdrop, but this same cliff serves as the foreground for another view. I thought that was super clever too. Up next, this has to be one of the most beautiful builds. I've ever seen in Animal Crossing, ever. And I've been playing since release pretty much. Look at this. How beautiful is this? Again, with the layering, it's just, that's the key to working with your cliffs, figuring out how to take advantage of the layering techniques. The colors here as well are so beautiful and don't even get me started on the pathing. It is brilliant, but I love the use of the pine tree here as, you know, a centerpiece. It's so, I don't know, it's so aesthetically pleasing. Here is another view of the pathing so you can really appreciate how the creator set this up. Beautiful. This one I loved because we get to see some incline action. I always appreciate that. This kind of led up to this foresty area and then some villager houses. And of course we've got this double incline. I love how narrow this space is. I didn't even realize inclines could be that close together. This creator did it beautifully. I love the plank pathway that kind of curves around the tree. That's really well done. All of the decor here is just really beautiful and well laid out. This island also reminded me of my old island Lost Falls because it was in autumn and so there was a nostalgia factor too. I mean, how cute is this? I love this season. Up next, we've got this beautiful like winding pathway through the cliffs. I have honestly never seen something like this before. It's kind of like a maze, but it wasn't confusing. I didn't get lost. It was just a really beautiful way to make use of the cliffs and look how well decorated they are. I felt like all of them around me were really tall, but it was just the use of trees. Like, as you can see, there's only that one little spot where there actually is a second cliff tier. All the rest are just one cliff tier, and the trees add so much height, so much visual interest. We've seen lots of big cliffs and lots of, you know, big areas using cliffs, but I loved this one because it was so small. We've just got this tiny little cliff on the right beside Nook's Cranny. It's tied into the area by the fact that there is a flower shop next to Nook's Cranny and the cliff itself is a tiny lavender farm. I mean, what's not to love here? I thought it was absolutely precious and really well presented at this time of day. It's just such a soft place. I love this. Also, we've got this view at the back of this creator's island. I thought this was so beautiful. It's like broken up by the waterfalls. I love doing that, just breaking up cliffs by making interesting waterfalls, not just straight and narrow ones. Look at how beautiful this view is when you look at it from this angle. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And I really like the mastery of terraforming that we see here. It's just so beautifully done. Also the decor, top notch, beautiful pathing. This one, again, just blew me away. We've got another take on a distant island. This one is like a cityscape and there are even these moving UFO items, which is so cool. It makes it feel like a high-tech city in the distance. Of course, that's helped by the lights coming from the servers. And I believe those are the backwards uh, diner signs, the neon diner signs. Looks amazing. I love the green theme we've got going on here. It's just so beautiful. I also didn't notice until just now, but look at the lighthouse thing in the distance. 
awesome. This one is a doozy. Get ready to have your socks blown off because this cliff area is just beautiful. I'm stalling. Look at how beautiful this road is and everything. Let's hear it for these cliffs. I mean, I'm not even going to say it. The layering, you already know. Impeccable. I did say it. But look at all of these items. The wheat fields, the weeds, the mums, the trees. Everything works together so well. Why did that rhyme? Do I think I'm Dr. Seuss? Anyway, this is just so great and I love the windmill adding movement and visual interest. Thank you all so much for watching today. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. And of course, thank you so much to the creators who submitted for today's video. If you would like to submit for my next 15 ideas video, make sure you join my discord linked below and yeah, read and agree to the rules and you can submit next time. That's all for today. Bye.